Today we're going to be continuing our discussion about depth of field and introduce an interesting concept called the hyperfocal distance. And we're also going to talk a little about why it's so cool to shoot with these old manual focus lenses. Hey fellow photographers, what did you shoot today? So hyperfocal distance, what is it? Well, let's say we want to get the most of our image in focus as possible. This is particularly important for, let's say, landscape photography, when you want to get the whole scene as much in focus. Well, there's a certain point that you can focus to, a certain subject distance that we talked about last time, where everything past that point, all the way to infinity, is going to be in focus. And in addition, everything halfway between your camera and that subject point, from the point backwards, is also going to be in focus. So we have a focus range of half the hyperfocal distance all the way to infinity. All of that is going to be in focus in our image. So let's see what this looks like mathematically, and then we'll look at some examples. So I have my two equations up here from last time for the near and far limits of the depth of field. Now, what we want to know is how can we get the most depth of field? Well, if we set this equal to infinity, we want the far distance to be as far back as possible. We notice that in the limit, the denominator of this is going to have to go to zero because as this gets smaller and smaller and smaller towards zero, something in the denominator that's you know, less than one and it gets smaller and smaller makes the entire fraction bigger. So the depth of field, the far limit of the depth of field will extend outward and outward. So by setting this equal to zero and finding out what that is, we can find our hyperfocal distance. So we take this denominator and we set this equal to zero and solve for s. And I'll just give you the result here. s is equal to, and we're going to use a new nomenclature for this special subject distance s. We're going to call it h, capital H for hyperfocal distance. So that's also equal to, so these are the same thing. We're just going to change the name to h because it's a special distance. It's going to be equal to f squared over nc plus f. Now if we take this and we plug it in here for s, right? So we take this quantity and plug it in here. Notice that when we multiply nc by nc, we get f squared. And we have plus another f. So the plus f and minus f cancel out. And then we have f squared minus an f squared. That cancels out. So that all goes to 0. So this is the hyperfocal distance. It's the, it's the subject distance, the focusing distance, which is going to enable the depth of field in the far region to go to infinity. Now what happens when we plug this up into here? Well, if we take this expression for s and we put it up here, it's going to equal. So I'm going to change this s to h, and you'll see why in a second. So it's the same thing, s and h, f squared over. Here we have f squared plus nc times. Now for this s, I'm going to plug in this expression. So this expression is going to go right in here, f squared over nc plus f minus f. So the plus f and the minus f cancel out. nc times nc cancels out. Now we have f squared plus f squared. So now we have h f squared over 2 f squared. Well, now the f squareds just cancel out, and we have h over 2. So the near limit of our depth of field is half the hyperfocal distance. That's why I kept the top 1 h, so that it simplifies to this. Otherwise, we'd have a whole mess of things. So the near limit of depth of field, just to summarize, so this near limit at the hyperfocal distance is going to be h over 2. And the far limit is going to be infinity. So this is going to give us the most depth of field for any given focal length aperture combo. So why does this matter? Well, like I said, we want to get the most in focus as possible. This is especially true for things like landscape photography. And a lot of people may think, well, if I just focus my lens to infinity, well, I'm going to get everything in the background in focus. And that's not necessarily true. Because if you extend your lens to infinity, yeah, you'll get everything infinity onward in focus, but you won't get as much as the foreground as if you focus at h, the hyperfocal distance. So let's see what that looks like on some really cool old manual focus lenses. So this is an old um, C series lens, one of the, the oldest lenses for the Hasselblad V system. And it actually has a really interesting mechanic. And we can use this to sort of confirm all the things we talked about with depth of field. 
but I'll show you how you can set this to the hyperfocal distance. So first let's pick an aperture, right? This lens is a 250 millimeter lens. Uh, F 5.6 is the widest aperture that it goes. It goes all the way up to F 45. And the cool thing about this lens is as you turn this aperture ring, these red markings will actually widen. And this is interesting because this bottom ring here is your focus scale. So as you go up in F stop, you go up in F number, these get wider and wider, which does confirm from last time we talked about N, which is our F number, as you increase the F number, you get more depth of field. So another interesting thing is, we talked about as you increase the subject distance, you get more depth of field as well, right? So if I show you this lens at, let's say, let's say 20, 20 feet, the scale is in feet. So if I show you 20 feet at an aperture of, let's say, F16, right? So somewhere between, let's say maybe 18 or 19 feet and 22 feet is in focus. But if I go to, let's say 40 feet, all of a sudden it's closer to 35 to 50 feet is in focus. So that tells us right away that as we increase the subject distance, the focusing distance, what happens is that we get more depth of field. So one more thing we talked about was the focal length, right? So as you go from a shorter focal length to a longer focal length lens, we should get shallower depth of field in the longer focal length. So let's see if that's true. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at this 80 millimeter lens, also for the Hasselblad V system because it has this nice depth of field scale. And let's take a look at this focus to, let's say four meters. And let's look at the F16 markings. So the F16 markings go from about 2.5 meters to about 10 meters. So 2.5 to 10 is our depth of field range. Now if we focus the same, this lens, also to four meters, now this is a longer focal length lens, 180 millimeters. And if we focus this to four meters, and we look at the F16 aperture F number, we see that we don't even have anything from three to five. It doesn't even, doesn't even encompass you know, more than one meter on either side. So just between these two lenses, the 80 millimeter had about a focal range of depth of field of about seven and a half meters, and not, only, not even two meters at the same, focus at the same distance with different focal length lenses. Okay, so we established that the math that we talked about last time works, and these lenses with their depth of field scales actually show what we talked about last time. That's great. But how can we use this new concept of the hyperfocal distance to our advantage? Well, what we can do is because these focus rings have an infinity mark on them, and we, you know, we have a, our aperture set for the exposure of the scene, if we want the most in focus as possible, we can set, let's say we have our aperture set at at f16, what we can do is we can line up the infinity mark on the focus scale with the rightmost 16 number, and basically that will tell us that our hyperfocal distance is somewhere you know, upwards of 20 meters on this lens. So that means that you know, if I put this to infinity, notice how on the f16 number I'm not getting the 20 meters in focus. But if I put the infinity to the 16 mark on this side, and I look at the 16 on the other side, now I have somewhere like around between 10 and 20, so somewhere around 15 meters to infinity in focus. Whereas if I put it here, I only have something a little higher than 20 meters onward to infinity in focus. So by putting this at the F number, the aperture number that we have set, what we can do is we can get more of the photo in focus. Now, this is a long lens, right? So it's gonna have less depth of field. So we'll, let's look at the same example or, or a similar example on the 80 millimeter lens. So this is a little bit wider lens. This is about your normal lens size for the six by six format. So this would be equivalent to a full frame camera somewhere around 50 millimeters, just to give you an idea. So this is like your normal everyday walk around lens. So let's say we're at shooting at F22, which we probably don't wanna do because it's gonna introduce diffraction, like we talked about with our uh, aberrations video, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot at F22 anyway, just to give you an example of how much you can get in focus if you really want to get as much in focus as possible. So the maximum aperture for this lens, F22, we're gonna set our lens to F22, and we're gonna look at our depth of field scale at the 22 on the right. Now again, if I had focused this lens to infinity, right, 
and I, I set it to f22 on the left side, we're only going to get from 5 meters to infinity in focus. But if I put my infinity stop over here to f22 on this side, I look back at f22 on this side, and now we're about 2.5 meters to infinity. So not as much of a difference as the, as the other lens, but still significant. So we get an extra 2.5 meters in the foreground in focus with this lens. This little mini film point and shoot, it's a Contax T, is actually a really unique little camera. And here, we don't really have a uh, focusing scale because the lens is, is very tiny. But what we do have is a green sort of line across the focusing scale with a dot on it and a green 8 on the aperture scale, so f8. So this is telling us that at that special aperture, f8 in this case, and lining up the focus ring with that dot, what we're going to get is that is the hyperfocal distance for that aperture. And it says here we're going to get about, let's say, one and a half meters to infinity in focus when we're at f8 and at that point. And that kind of is an homage to the old journalism adage, you know, f8 and be there. So when you're shooting street photography and you have fast enough film and enough light, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is, you know, you want to you don't have time necessarily to, to get critical focus. So what you're going to do is you're going to set it to some sort of range. Uh, in this case, this is at the hyperfocal distance, but it doesn't have to be. But if you know you're going to be about three to five meters to your subject, you can set your aperture, and you, if you have a lens with a depth of field scale on it, you can set it to that sort of zone focusing, and you know that if you take a shot, anything within that range is going to be acceptably sharp, acceptably in focus. So this is how you can use these depths of field scales in order to, in to, to, to you know, speed up your photography or get more, critical, uh, get more critical focus or get more stuff in focus when it comes to things like landscape photography by setting your subject distance to the hyperfocal distance. So as always, I hope this was an informative look at things that have to do with depth of field and now we introduce this hyperfocal distance calculation that you can do or if you have manual focus lenses with depth of field scales, you now understand a little bit better how to use those. And honestly, it's all about learning about what gear you have and maybe what gear you need to get the look that you want. So within your gear, you can use this to your advantage to either you know, use the zone focusing or get the most in focus as you want. Or next time you're buying a lens, maybe you're like, hey, I want to try a manual focus lens because it might have these features, long focus throw and, and the depth of field markings because I want to do street photography or I want to do landscape photography and I don't necessarily need in those situations fast autofocus or any of that kind of stuff and maybe I can save some money because those lenses can at times be cheaper because they don't include the electronics. So instead of looking at gear reviews and, and, and lens reviews and saying what's sharp and what's not, think about the gear that will help you, enable you to take the pictures that you want to take and then go from there. So hopefully this gives you some insight as to why you wouldn't want to pick one lens over another between this video and the depth of field video. Do I want a wide angle lens? Do I want to take portraits and I want a telephoto lens? What focal length do I want? What apertures do I need? If I'm going to take you know, manual focus, do I have a depth of field scale? All these questions you can ask yourself makes you a more informed consumer instead of taking some guy like me, my advice on, oh, you should buy this lens or that lens. Figure out what's going to work for you. Go out there and create beautiful photographs. Until next time, happy shooting.